Welcome to Real News. Tonight we continue our week-long series on defending the Second Amendment with one simple word, and that's control. Will, some people want it, some people got it. <laughs> uh, control is also not just a Janet Jackson song, but it is uh, the, the title of a new book by Glenn Beck, Exposing the Truth About Guns, Control. Um, it's out right now in paperback, and it's a handy little book for anyone who has engaged in, let's say, a cable news debate with someone who is an advocate for gun control, or for that matter, anyone who's engaged in a backyard barbecue debate that you might be confronted with somebody who just disagrees with you about gun control. It's got 36 various myths that are commonly perpetuated um, in these debates. Uh, Buck, S.E., Amy, Matt, backyard barbecues or cable, I'm sure you've run into some of these myths. I mean, can, do you know one or two? That well, you see often? Uh, oh, yeah. Why does anyone need an assault rifle? I mean, you go down the list. The, the one that really bothers me the most is the hypocrisy over women's rights. Women are supposed to be allowed to uh, choose a, any way of life for themselves, but I can't choose how I'm supposed to defend myself. Right. According to Mike Bloomberg, well, very, in this city, I'm not allowed to defend myself. I go to a college campus as a, as a young woman, a freshman. I'm not allowed to defend myself. That really, really irks me. But a very common myth that I hear all the time, Time, and I, I'm sure Glenn is going to debunk it, is that you're more likely to be killed by the gun you own, that the person who breaks into your house will wrestle it from you and uh, shoot you in the chest, so, you're, so that guns in the home are actually dangerous. I can tell you both that those are listed among <laughs> the 36 myths that it, it debunks in this book. Excellent. But let's bring in the author of the book, Glenn Beck himself. Uh, Glenn, glad to have you on the program. Good to be here. I just want to make clear. I am one of the many authors in this. I really authored the last part of the solutions, but these are some of the best um, authors. I mean, we have uh, uh, John Lott is part of this. Um, we have um, Lieutenant Dave Grossman. We have researchers and people that um, went out and scoured and really looked for all of the real answers to these questions. And, you know, um, you know, the, the, the things that are amazing are when you get to the, the actual hard science where there's some place in here, it's um, in the solution part, where, where we talk about um, the solution and everybody always says, oh, you know, the media doesn't have any, you know, violence and everything else. It, it doesn't have any effect on them or anything else. Really? Look at this. This is amazing. This, starting right here, the verdict is in, starts here. This is just a list of all of the different um, studies that say violence is the reason. The media is the reason. And it's, you know, little things like the American Medical Association, the National Institute of Mental Health, the U.S. Attorney General's Task Force on Family Violence, the American Academy of Pediatrics Task Force, the American Psychological Association's Commission. I mean, it's stunning. And None of these are actually talked about um, at all. You, you know, you guys, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. How you go on to Piers Morgan or SC, Buck was there this week, how you're there at MSNBC, your head was pop. <laughs> because they, they, won't, they won't recognize facts. How can you have a conversation? Well, let's, let's deal with this on some specifics because you brought up one name in particular. Let's deal with one of the myths that we commonly encounter, and that is that, look, why do you always run to the paranoid end of the ideological spectrum? Nobody wants to take your guns away. That's a myth we <laughs> commonly hear. In fact, you invoked one particular name, Piers Morgan, and I'll just leave it to him in his own words. Take a listen to what Piers Morgan had to say. I don't want to change the Second Amendment. I don't want to change an American's right to bear an arm at their home to defend people. I want to get rid of these killing mm -hmm. machine assault weapons off the street. Mm. Glenn, no one wants to take your guns away. Um, yeah, they do. In fact, we have a, a whole list um, of, in their own words of the people that want to take them uh, away from you. Eric Holder, uh, Vice President uh, Biden, uh, Barack Obama. We have... Uh, a speech here from um, uh, from uh, Eric Holder before the Women's National Democratic Club. Uh, we have uh, person after person after person in the administration and, and their words saying this is what we should do. How about this one? New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof. So the only thing that legislators do is to reinstitute the assault ban and the high magazine. That would be great. That will be a step forward. Morgan says, yeah, but it won't be enough. It won't be enough. But we have to move on the handguns as well. That will come later. I mean, 
It is, it, it, it absolutely is their plan. It's a spoken plan. And then we go through it starting in 1689, all the way through the history of gun control and how gun control started here and just kept moving down and moving down. And it was all for a reason. It was right before a hostile takeover. You know, I think what's interesting going off that myth in particular is there are folks who say, we don't want to take your guns away, and they're just lying. They actually do. But there are also folks who say, I don't want to take your guns away. I don't want to take your shotgun away, your hunting rifle away. I just want to take scary guns away. What they don't realize is the components of those so-called assault rifles, assault weapons, could be in your shotgun, your hunting rifle. And they don't know any better because so many of the people who talk about guns and gun control know nothing about guns and gun control. You know, the I, I tell you, Essie, you, you are probably, I mean, is anybody else more well-versed on guns um, on TV right now than Essie? Oh, well, I don't know. Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm not. Thank you. Um, you are probably more well-versed on guns, and um, uh, it, it is a little intimidating. The problem with uh, our society is... Um, we have doubled the amount of guns in our society, um, almost doubled it in, since 1991-ish. Uh, We've almost doubled the amount of weapons here in the United States. At the same time, we have cut the murder or violent um, death by use of a handgun or a, a, of a rifle almost in half. Right. So that shows you right there that debunks everything that they're saying. But the problem is, while we have doubled this number since 1960 something or other, um, we have actually reduced the ownership of guns, the percentage of Americans owning a gun or being around a gun by a significant number. And that's the real problem. They could take the guns away from people in Australia because most people didn't have a gun. And it's easy to lie about guns. It's easy to confuse people. It's easy to say, oh, look, at it, it's spray painted black and it's really <laughs> spooky. And people will go along with it because they don't know. When Bloomberg got on TV and he said, you know, semi-automatic, that means you just grab that the trigger and you pull it back and it will shoot as many bullets as, as you have loaded. That's not true. No. But most people don't know because the, the number of people who have guns in the United States is down to about, I think it's like 32 or 35 percent now. The intellectually consistent position from the left on this is, in fact, a ban. That's right. why people who advocate yes. a ban, you have to say, well, at least they're being honest. They're being honest. Because, because yeah. you know, to your point about how they don't want to take away your shotgun, if they wanted to actually have any impact whatsoever in violence at all, mm -hmm. they would have to ban handguns. Of course. Right? No, and if they banned they... handguns, then they'd have to say, well, you can't have them for defense because they're the best weapon for defense. That's what people want for themselves. Yes. And, and the other but, thing, we, but, we just... But why are we looking for intellectual honesty from these people? These are the people that have uh, Steven Spielberg going back into E.T. and digitally removing the hand, the handguns <laughs> and the weapons from the from the police and from the government in E.T. and replacing them with walkie talkies and then saying that movies and everything else have no effect on anybody. Ben, yes. because, Glenn, if you expose their intellectual dishonesty, then the incrementalist approach does not work anymore, and that's what most yes. of them are doing. They're trying to yes. just get little bits here and, and there And if together. you force the honesty, if you force the honesty that what I'm really seeking is a ban on all weapons, you have to trust that the public will then <laughs> reject that honest position. That is politically that perilous. Is the honest right. position. The honest position is one uh, that we don't hear enough, which is, I think, a lot of opponents to gun control, they just don't like the Second Amendment. They right. say that yes. it was only designed for a militia. Militia. We don't have militias anymore, that so there's no sense. reason for it. Of course, uh, we have a Second Amendment, so they'd have to get that constitutionally repealed. Glenn, uh, do you see that there's any sort of middle ground on this? No, no. Um, uh, because I know who progressives are, and you know, we, we just very clearly um, and succinctly said what progressives are, uh, incrementalists. That's the progressive way. They, their argument originally was like, you communists, we, we get it, but we just can't handle a revolution. We just don't want blood in the streets. That's not the American way. We'll just take it in baby steps. So there is no position. People like Michael Bloomberg is absolutely intellectually dishonest. And I really believe the push is coming right now because we are headed for economic trouble. We are headed for social unrest. We are, let me ask you, just with what's happened with Boston and how we don't, I, at least I don't. I don't believe the news media and I don't believe the government. So when we have another big 9-11 and we all know that it is the Muslim Brotherhood and they say, oh, it's not the Muslim Brotherhood. It's just a, it was a crazy uh, YouTube video that happened that made them blow up the entire city of Detroit. That's a bad example because 
all progressives have already blown up the city of Detroit. Um, but we'll look at them and they'll go a different path and we'll say, you know what, you don't represent, you're not keeping us safe at all anymore. And that's what they're preparing for. They have to disarm the American people if they're going to remain in control. There are several other myths in here. There's myths such as, and, and Glenn began to touch on them right there. I'm glad you brought up the Second Amendment. Uh, you have to admit it's pretty outdated. It's an interesting argument you hear from progressives. One, they don't apply to the First Amendment, for example, as though the First Amendment protections would not extend to, for example, Twitter. Mm. Yeah, when, are you ready for this? The, they, the, the um, uh, founders did not envision a world where pornography was this prevalent and yet they use the first amendment they never say the founders never saw internet porn no first amendment is absolute they're totally fine with that the problem is with the second amendment is if you lose the second amendment you lose all the rest of them i believe except for the tax one they'll keep that one <laughs> everything else will be gone because you, you'll have no teeth I, they, I, people won't have any teeth I, that, that leads me to what i think is the most interesting myth we're going to run out of time here but that you address in the book and that is that how are you going to defeat tyranny with your ar-15 they address the idea how do, the myth that you are somehow going to going to rebel against tyranny because of the second amendment okay let me tell you something first of all why are they trying to get uh, why are they trying so hard to make sure you don't have any weapon whatsoever? Why are they trying so hard to do that if, it, if it, you don't have a chance to defeat? The other th thing is, and, and you know, the, uh, the argument in the book is much better, but let me just say this uh, off the top of my head because this, this drives me out of my mind. Anybody who says, oh, the Second Amendment, what, you're going to go defeat the federal government? They have F-16s and everything else. They have tanks. Like, you're going to do it with your handgun or your shotgun or your AR-15. You know what you're doing? You are making a case that there's already too much gun control. That's what you're telling me. You're telling me if I can't keep the government in check, then there's already too much gun control. That makes me say, you know what, maybe we'll go progressive the other way. Maybe we, start, we have to start taking things off the table and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your gun control proposals off the table and I'm going to put maybe a tank on the table. How do you feel about that, Joe Biden? The new book is called Control, Exposing the Truth About Guns. Go out and buy three copies immediately. Glenn, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks, guys. You bet.